Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Royri Jensen. I'm from Australia, the land down under, or more importantly, the Great Southland of the Holy Spirit. So I'm here to answer your question on what does the Bible say about perseverance? So, perseverance, who needs it? Well, apparently you do, or they would not have asked me to do this talk, all right? So let's get into it for the next couple of minutes. What does perseverance actually mean? Other words for it could be endurance or tenacity or determination, any of those words. And it's about continuing on to the end despite difficulties, trials, testings and delays in achieving your success. Hmm. You actually can't have much success unless you develop a good measure of perseverance. The Bible's full of stuff about perseverance. In actual fact, it has about 20 references. So it's pretty important. And perseverance will put steel in your backbone so you don't flip and flop through life. So I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. <coughs> There's many you can look up. But I'm going to give you about three scriptures and then I'm going to tell you a story. So let's start with Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. Let me read it to you. Not only so, but we rejoice in suffering. Oh, hey, yay, we're going to suffer. Woohoo! Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Yippee! And perseverance produces character. And character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given. So uh, if you want to go, you, you start with rejoicing in suffering. Like I don't actually know anybody who really does that too well. But it says we go from perseverance to character to hope. So if you don't have much hope, maybe you need to look back and see where you dropped the bundle of perseverance. Because it seems as though, according to the word, it starts with perseverance. Anyway, uh, just a thought. Now, another scripture is in Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to read that one to you because that's a ripper. Hebrews chapter 12, you probably know it off by heart. If you don't, you probably should have a go at learning it so that it sits inside your bones. Get, get it into the marrow of your bones, you know. It says, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3, says, um, Therefore, when you see the word therefore, you always need to have a look to the previous passage and see what it's there for. But you can do that another time. You'd have to read Hebrews 11. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, seeing we are encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, like they're talking about in the previous chapter, let us throw off every weight and the sin that besets us and let us run with patience or perseverance the, the race that is set before us. Let's look unto Jesus and fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, scoffing at the shame of the cross. So he made a shame out of shame. <laughs> Good on him. And he sat down at that, um, and consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that your heart will not grow weary, or so that you will not lose heart. So... <sighs> Imagine what a mess it would have been for all of us if Jesus had decided to quit partway through his life or going up Calvary's Hill, go, it's just too hot today. You know what I mean? So he didn't. He pers persevered to the end and out of that came the salvation. So we've got to consider him in pushing through and making stuff happen. So, so far we've seen uh, hope come and now this is about heart. And then the last one is about the harvest. So Galatians chapter 6 
verse 9 says, Let us not grow weary in well-doing, uh, for in due season we shall reap a harvest if we do not give up. So it looks like perseverance is a thing. It will give you hope, it will give you a heart, and it will give you a harvest. And if you read the other 17 references, you could probably get a whole lot more haters to line up with hope, harvest, and heart. Anyway, so I said I'd have a story for you, so I have. And it's a little bit of a story about Joseph with a few minutes that we've got left. <sighs> when we read about Joseph in the Old Testament, He's the dude that was, had all these dreams and his brothers persecuted him. The guy gets sold into slavery um, and, and he's abandoned by his brothers. He's sold into slavery. He's falsely accused. He ends up in the slammer or prison, whatever. He ends up there and there was a long process from the time he had a dream till the time he actually becomes Prime Minister of Egypt, second only to the Pharaoh. Now, if we were reading that, oh my goodness, it's just a couple of pages in Genesis, just, you know, just a few pages, the life of Joseph. And it seems like it all happened very quickly. Well, let me tell you, it was about 17 years from the time the dude had a dream about all the sheaves and everything bowing down to him. From the time he had that dream till the time the dream was fulfilled, was 17 years. And Psalm 105 talks about Joseph. Let me finish with this. <sighs> it's talking about the problems that the Egyptians were having. Uh, sorry, the Israelites were having, but it says, but he had already sent a man ahead of the people to Egypt. It was Joseph. I mean, 105 verse 17, who was sold as a slave. His feet were bruised by strong shackles <laughs> and his soul was held by iron. What it really means is that while his feet were in irons, iron was getting into him. So one thing that happens is when we get into certain circumstances, often over which we have no control, but we persevere, that circumstance actually affects us and puts iron in our spine and I want to say that it's something that's really needed today because especially in the western church we quit so easily but God wants to put some iron in your spine like he did for Joseph his feet were in iron but the scripture says the iron actually got in him ah, so God's a God of process eh? <coughs> And um, seeing as a process, we need to know that there's going to be perseverance. So process, perseverance, so that your purpose, did you like those peas? So that your purpose can come to pass. So God bless you from Australia. Love you. Bye.